So here I am in JFK. I am flying on Virgin. And oh man, am I feeling nauseous. This is something that always happens to me with New York Uber drivers. They have, uh, they have a wheel and they have the brake and the gas pedal. And I think they constantly are using both of them at the same time. They're always going left, right, left, right, left, right. And accelerating and then slowing down. And accelerating and slowing down. And every single time, without fail, I get nauseous. Which, I guess there's nothing I can do anything about, but, oh man. I really hope I'm not going to be nauseous for this entire flight because I don't know. <laughs> It'll be a rough seven or eight hours if that's the case. Either way, I'm just going to go through security and hopefully I start feeling better soon. Uh, so I made it through TSA, of course, and now I'm in the Amex lounge enjoying my complimentary dinner gonna wait for my flight which departs in exactly two hours so I have some time to kill so this is the second red-eye flight that I've taken in three days the last one I took I didn't sleep at all and I've been exhausted the past two days by the time I recover I am on track for the next red-eye so hopefully I have a little more of a comfortable seat this time some food, some cold water, something like that, and I'm able to relax and actually get some sleep. But it's really amazing how much you're required to pay for a comfortable place to sleep. Either way, I'll send a video of what it actually looks like when I get there. Here I am in London, in the UK, I've made it. I just went through customs and it literally just automatically scanned my passport, which was kind of crazy. It's like we're living in the 31st century. I guess it scanned my face, scanned my passport, did some facial recognition and that's it. It's very cool to finally be in, uh, be in London, I guess in Europe now. I really don't know what I'm gonna do. I guess I'm gonna go to the hotel, drop off my bag, I end up getting it, we'll see. And then from there, who knows? Besides that, got to London and it is incredibly rainy. I should have expected that. It is London after all. I guess stereotypes exist for a reason. So an interesting thing I've noticed while looking around the airport is that all the signs are completely in English. I figured since I'm in Europe, I'd be seeing signs in like English, French, Spanish, German, all the major European languages, but I guess everybody in the UK really wanted to preserve English as like the only language. It's like compared to the US where you're gonna see every language. You're gonna see like English, Spanish for sure, super often Chinese on all the airport signs, but to you, I guess not. I guess it makes sense why the UK left the EU if this is kind of how they go about labeling all their signs seems like they weren't ready to integrate. But then again, maybe English is already the language of the EU, so it doesn't matter. Well, anyway, I'm waiting for my bag. Apparently my eSIM doesn't work, so I have no cell service. Um, my phone is locked to AT&T, so I have no idea what, what the hell I'm gonna do. Uh, that's gonna suck. But I figure, I can figure that out, at least get an Uber to where I'm gonna be staying, drop off my bag, and have a full day in the rain because it was super overcast and raining. I think I'm gonna go to some museums. Thing is, I made a whole travel itinerary, but I forgot it. <laughs> I already forgot something. So I think as time goes on, more and more stuff that I forgot will be revealed. And a travel itinerary, I can get by without, but hopefully I didn't forget anything vital. Like I have my passport, but there's some other stuff, who knows? Either way. 
I'll grab my bags and I'll get back to you when I have a plan on what to do today. So I saw the London Museum. I've been here for like the past three or four hours and there is a lot to see. It basically covers every major society on the planet and pretty in depth too. I enjoyed it, but I don't know. It's a lot of stuff that I've already seen. I've already seen kind of a lot of these museum sort of pieces in different museums in New York and the like, Philadelphia, stuff like that. We'll see uh, what else London has to offer. made it back to the hotel finally checked in I have been up for like 30 almost 40 hours so I'm very tired and I'm gonna go to sleep I guess in a couple hours I'm gonna try to stay up just so I don't mess up my sleep schedule really bad it's only five o'clock here right now but today was really fun actually I flew in got to London kind of by 11 a.m dropped my bags off I saw the entire Museum of London, which was very impressive. They basically had an extensive exhibit on every major civilization before, like, the medieval ages. It was very impressive. Uh, a lot of the stuff I had seen before, that's the thing, because there are similar collections in, like, New York and Philadelphia that I've been to, but it was interesting to see it all kind of coalesce together. Uh, there was some very impressive stuff that the king had donated to the museum. Apparently the king gets to own lots of stuff and then when he dies, he gives it away. Um, so that was fun. I also went to the Library of Britain, which was interesting. And yeah, I think that's it. I also, Oh, I also went to a very cool shopping center type thing that was in Harry Potter. So it was like all old looking stuff and kind of weird stuff that they were selling. I didn't buy anything because none of it was stuff I would really be into, but it was cool to kind of see things. Uh, besides that, I took the tube. It is way nicer than the New York City subway system. It's like a hundred times cleaner and you feel safer. I, I didn't see any crazy people, which was uh, nice. And they have this thing where all the subway cars are just connected. It's like one long worm. So you can see all the way to the front and all the way to the back. And that was nice. Besides that, it's just like any other subway system. Complicated. I almost went the wrong way. But I'm going to go to sleep uh, pretty soon. And then tomorrow I'm going to keep on my plan. Actually, I had a big itinerary for London. But I ended up forgetting it back in New York. So I'm never going to see that again. I also had an itinerary for a bunch of other cities I wanted to visit. So I'm just going to have to make it up as I go along and try to remember what I wrote down. Besides that, tomorrow I think I'm going to go see the Temple of Mithras, which kind of fulfills my goal of seeing one, what's the word, one Roman ruin in every city I visit. I'm, I'm going to be probably going to Berlin as well, and there's no Ro Roman ruins there, but uh, might as well do it in all the cities that it's possible. So I get to see some stuff in London, Rome, maybe Istanbul if I go there later, we'll see. 
Uh, and then tomorrow, I don't know what else I'm going to do. I guess you'll see it next in the video. What a day I've had. I have been to the Tower of London, to the Cult of Mithras temple, which was pretty cool. It's kind of fulfilling my goal to see one Roman ruin in every city I go to. And I got to see the highest point, highest tower in London, the Shard. The elevator and it's creaking. This like super nice new building has an elevator that sounds like it's in a 200 year old building. But I'm all right, it's not so bad. I'm gonna buy some jeans, grab dinner, and then go to sleep because even though I slept like 12 hours last night, that's still averaging only six hours over the past two days. So I'm still pretty tired and I haven't had any coffee. The only coffee I had here was absolutely terrible. I, I barely had any. I don't know if that's uh, all of London or just here, but I didn't enjoy it. Either way, I'm at the bottom. So I'll see you in a minute.